This is hard valued in the sense that it that we've drawn out mm -hmm. the interaction between A and B into the open. During the where where the hard value of this, uh, in other words, what this what the device also is in a sense is a measuring instrument for measuring the hard value event that the red box learns something, acquires something. Yeah, because in fact, yeah. So, so rather than it being a teaching machine, it's a measuring apparatus. It measures the fact of the understanding. Of, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's a different, in other words, I think if you, if you think about it that way, you get, uh, the, it's enough of a different perspective that the whole thing shifts about a bit in your mind and you, you, you see the sense in which, again, to get back to what I think is a very good thing to have spent this time on so far today, which is to talk again about what the nature of the understanding is, what the nature of the event is. That, that here you see that what, all that's happened is, is a bit of what might have gone on just within the red boxed individual uh, has now been pulled out yeah. to the point where it's measured. That indicates mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. a usual right. circumstance. In fact. So it, what, what's happened here is that we've gone into a circuit and pulled out the wire and stuck in a meter. Right. Right, uh, I understand. And that's and that is the <coughs> all of what's happening there. So this is this is the measuring device of the event. It happens to be that uh, we might assert uh, grandly that the event of the, that individual learning about this topic would not have occurred without the measuring device. Is what's being learned itself uh, static, or is that changing as well? That is. Well, in the previous ones, uh, it was static only insofar as it was in a theoretically infinite stack of demonstrations and a recognizer of all of them. In fact, it contained about four or five, uh, with no more infinite uh, tape on a Turing machine. <laughs> uh, and it turns out that uh, they would use many more than that, or needed to, to each of the topics. Uh, there was descriptive material of various sorts, examined by a thing called an explore operation, which is part of the why thing. <laughs> Um, there are various <coughs> markers on the thing, to, which are recorded there as, as, as differently shaped. And uh, they allow you to aim for different areas of the subject matter to explore mm -hmm. the descriptive covering of the subject matter, to examine the descriptions, uh, to essay an explanation, uh, or, uh, in fact, the, the rectangular marked one, whereas where an explanation has been essayed to a certain surrounding event, or a certain surrounding topic. And failing the ability to do so may obtain uh, demonstrations which are explanations given to you uh, from, uh, again, a fixed source, but it's a, it's a list of them, it's a whole list of them, again, theoretically infinite. Uh, again, um, very few of them actually are used uh, in, in practice, but um, different ones are used of different people. Uh, it isn't the case just one is used. Yes, right. and, and there's another sense in which uh, the thing remains fixed. What presumably happens as a result of this is that A and B have a conversation and that therefore uh, that AB complex is modified as a result. As to say, there are new topics put into the mesh, new mm -hmm. relations, established in it, whereas on the other hand, the machine is as it was, other than being slightly more worn out. Well, supposing that some of those relations are directional. Supposing that uh, one is engaged not, not only with, with, with acquiring what's in the machine, but transforming what's in the machine by establishing propositional uh, That is perfectly possible. That's perfectly possible, just one has now, it yet. Now, A is in the process. Uh, of altering what's in the machine by establishing propositional links. B isn't there yet. B has only queried the machine about a certain a certain part of the domain yeah. uh, before A interacted. Yeah. B decides to relook at that map again, mm. and suddenly everything has changed. That's perfectly all right. Well, uh, nowadays, all it happens all the time. Yes, I mean, the point is, is, is again, one's trying to model here something that might be replaced by the A B complex being could be imagined as a single individual, mm -hmm. and the thing on the right-hand side, presently a rather dull machine, might be another. And it's quite often that something that you say to me uh, changes 
my perspective, my attitude on the topic. Mm -hmm. And the next time you ask me a question pursuing an independent line of inquiry, that's how I'm going to get an answer. Then you get a different answer, and right. then you might get upset with me and say, "But you just said that." Right. And I say, well, "Yes, but what you what you just told me now changed my mind, and now you now have not only the fact that you have changed my structure, but you are now made aware of the fact mm -hmm. that you changed my structure, mm -hmm. and we can have." Uh, come to an agreement over an understanding of that event as well as the event that we might have, uh, the, the thing about which we were uh, striving for an agreement previously. And that's of course what one wants in the implementation end to do. In fact, things that do this sort of thing uh, in a machine, we have one on the computer that does it in a moderately simple-minded way, and it uh, allows you to uh, create things, but doesn't allow you to, to presently to do very interesting things with it. Uh, not because it's not impossible, just because it's tired, you know, one implementation lags behind theory considerably. And then it would be very interesting to see what happens. For example, the, there's nothing to forbid you uh, giving the machine and having it accept uh, some proposition which is eventually going to cause the machine to shoot itself. Okay. I mean, you can do that with people. Why shouldn't you be able to sure. work with this? Yeah. And you have to accept the consequences of that. That is to say, if you have done that to the machine, uh, just as if you do it to a, uh, an ordinary sentient organism that you're having a conversation with, uh, you have to accept the consequences down the road, and they may or may not be very predictable, uh, or rather anticipatable, or probably undoubtedly. What's the, what's the least the anticipatable uh, consequence? Of, of monitoring such an interaction uh, today. Uh, which sort? This sort? This sort. Um, this very simple sort. Well, this very simple sort you, is simply, as I say, a measuring device, and as Jeffrey said, a measuring device, together with a uh, data resource and uh, different types of data, referring to why and to how, and to extension. But it's a data resource together with a, a measuring device. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> the important thing is that what's going on inside the system is no different excepting in magnitude from the agreement to engage in the experiment. <laughs> so that the strange and otherwise unexplained within the theory type of event called a, a contract negotiated contract to, uh, to to engage in this experiment, to learn something, or um, whether it's an experiment or it's a learning experience, or to interact with, interact through, sorry, this, this resource, mm -hmm. uh, may indeed be fostered because the resource is very attractive and convenient, but it's not of any different kind to the events that are going on inside it. I mean, it is not said, for example, that something is true or false, a fact or not a fact, or probably so. It is simply said that if you want to interpret this thing <coughs> as a probability measure, for example, or in, in genetics, if you want to give a particular interpretation to these models, or in thermodynamics, if you wish to give, a particular interpretation to these models, then you may so do, and it will be in accord with some canons, which uh, I, I guess is called a subject matter consensus. Um, the, there is no reason why you should learn it in a prescribed way. As a matter of fact, there's no reason why something true in one world should be true in another. It's indeed one of the things you must do in taking either fuzzy theory or probability theory, which is a couple of things that particular gadgetry could easily accommodate, is to distinguish universes in which different things may be true. Otherwise, you don't have any independence. And don't necessarily, incidentally, have the same logic on them. <coughs> Does the machine uh, have the same track of, truth coherent, of, of logical relations that imply coherences? Uh, only insofar as it deems certain things in a tutorial situation to be in accord with the authority. And, uh, you have authoritas, but not scanty, or scanty as mm -hmm. you like in, your, in the world you create. Now, in the more modern, uh, up-to-date system, which Jeffrey is talking about, the mesh representations and those beyond, uh, and the Proto-language, or proto-logic, proto-language, actually, I think, L sub P, 
in which you can express, I believe, any conversational language at all, uh, though it's very crude, very primitive. Well, could A and B, for example, simultaneously um, establish a set of, uh, of contradictory? Uh, well, that was common even in the older, even in the older, uh, uh, older experiments. I mean. Um, uh, an example of this, but I mean there are, there are many, but one common example which you encountered often in, in, in connection with learning which people at school are anxious to do, uh, examining the notion of a photon, you generally talk about the corpuscular theory of light and certain areas in which it holds, um, and notably reflection phenomena and so on, and the wave theory and certain areas in which it holds, a fraction phenomena and so on. And uh, you then begin to talk about light and eventually you come up against a thing called a photon, which is a kind of signaling thing. Uh, and, um, but you don't have come up against that until eventually, because it's not only imagined, it's also stated these are rival hypotheses in some bits of the world which you have to learn about at school. I mean, these were historical theories. For some reason or other, we teach them in that way, and I think it's not a bad thing. It gives a very, very good example, amongst other things, of, 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 of scientific history, and uh, a good deal of background, and particularly it's rich in, in the ability to accommodate analogies that can be pointed out. And I, I want here to make a big distinction between creating analogies constructing them and attending to or using them as for example in learning or some other process uh, when they are pointed out and uh, both that's a very interesting point mm. uh, whenever I have and I haven't done it I must admit too recently whenever I've gone back around Plato mm. I have been amazed simply amazed at Socrates's brilliance at great mm. analogy mm -hmm. as opposed to remembering or recalling and using one yeah. Uh, and I'm fascinated by the process by which that occurs. Mm. And well, I think that uh, you can see it going on here, and you can see it going on inside those organizations, A and B, uh, but you can't see it in that picture going on inside A and B. You can see it going on here, because supposing you made a statement whether A and B be in different brains or the same brain. Okay? And I say, in a certain sense, if they're in different brains, they have to be at least doubled up to make that brain individuated in the proper sense. And, and, and very crudely, I cannot see that attending to something makes any sense unless you have a leak in Treisman's filters or Broadbent's filters, which, <laughs> you know, it's perfectly true. We, we do dominantly often attend to one thing. Um, but uh, if there were nothing else to attend, there would be no sense in saying attention is directed at. Um, however, uh, there you will notice that the expression A agrees with B, the meta statement outside this in a meta language, this is a meta linguistic statement. Mm -hmm. And this is a conversational statement. And notice that they are not differing in type, since indeed the conversational statement, this is also a conversational statement, somebody in the reserved position, but deliberately reserved by agreement to be an observer, makes this meta statement A agrees. with B over an understanding of T as a proposition which designates let's call that L let's call it L star is is a proposition in L star designating analogy 
in L. And that is why your hard data are in fact analogical statements, or designated. They are they're designated by propositions in a, a reserved metal language, meaning simply that somebody who could have been inside the system has jumped out of it and decided to look at A and B uh, as, as, as momentarily objects. Uh, and um, or momentarily, this is not quite true, it was momentarily an object called a conversation. Okay? An object of study called a conversation. And may indeed make this statement as true or false, which is a, a meta proposition, an L star, but it's designating an analogy in L which has the distinction A between B and a similarity component indicating the agreement. So the minimal statement you can make is an analogy. Now, we can also consider the uh, construction of analogies very nicely as being that which creates A's and B's to begin with. Uh, in other words, if you postulate the existence of closed systems like A and B, and then you assert that they learn or something, you, you have to have a mechanism and which avoids what would be counterfactual, I think, namely that learning necessarily converges to automatism. And uh, learning necessarily converges, converges to, to automatism, or ossification, or bureaucracy, bureaucratic death uh, in the society, or uh, to ossification, or stereotyping of a concept, or to, to becoming an overlearned skill which is performed automatically, like, like knitting, for example, is often performed automatically. Driving, walking, so on. They, uh, you can, um, in order to, in order to avoid the fact that conversations come to a sort of crystallized agreement, uh, and, and areas of accord reach a crystallized agreement, either in terms, of, in terms of language or in terms of organization or in terms of fiat or edict or whatever, uh, it is necessary to postulate some sort of bifurcation principle whereby other things can be made to converse with each other, either internally or externally. And uh, indeed, uh, I believe that this is an essential component in analogy construction. It may happen, of course, that several coexist. In fact, several must coexist. Uh, and when their coexistence uh, is accompanied by information transfer, they either tend to this condition of coalescence, or else they tend to. I mean, A would share all these concepts, <laughs> just the same bundle of concepts. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll go on to talk of A and B in a moment, and um, the, um, they are, I believe, and um, it uh, is certainly the case that uh, this also exists an organizational phenomenon in society where, as far as I can make out, you have both that situation, which we've talked about, uh, the situation of a couple of coherent mental organizations, um, well, as you know, um, uh, in a society which was composed, say, of a large number of brains, And where we can have, I would just draw in black circles things like A, B, that's a valid individuation of each, as if we only had one. Um, we can also, of course, have conversations which could be equally significant and depicted as things like this. Going on. And there's another one in there. 
We can also have things like this. a shared systems of meaning, or institutions as well, and or institutions as well, indicating that there are certain procedures in a concept that cannot be executed completely in any one brain, it must have cooperative or shared execution. And a whole flux of, of language and institution, I believe, arises in phenomena of this kind. Uh, and if you like, you can always take the green mark <laughs> uh, and say, well, these are the, the public bits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and you can refer, of course, to different types of language in which these critters interact. And this is IBM. There will be some people, namely those encompassed in one language of IBM, who are called brilliant managers, who can make IBM interact with ICL, another large firm or government or something. Uh, they don't understand the language in which that goes on. They only execute part of the concept. They're, since they maybe have internally an uh, understanding of that particular tongue, and perfect as it is, they're called brilliant managers, and uh, they're creative leaders and so on. Uh, which is a, a very just and sensible title for them. Because they, they do, in fact, swing things without exactly knowing how they do it. Mm -hmm. But they have a hunch about the language which large organizations employ when directly conversing to each other. Uh, likewise, there are other people in some of those baubles who are simply employed in a role in executing the reality which is IBM or ICL. And clerks or, or, or managers or whatever, whatever who are not necessarily creative enough to at all sense the language of IBM. They talk to each other, of course. So I mean, have an interlated picture here, somewhat like Helen Mead's notion of incidentally, for instance. Do you hear from, what's his name? Yeah, Justin's coming at 6.30. Uh -huh. This will be Elena Leonard. Are you in the midst of something, or? Well, uh, we are. We, we, we can hold for a moment. Or she can join in. To what extent uh, does, does the social, this organizational theory? Uh, Hello there, why don't you join us? How are you? Yeah. Hello. We have met yet, I'm sure. I do. Well, sure. Does this imply a, a certain formalism in terms of a, an operable logic? Yeah, I mean, that part that is a public concept is... Are these things that are negotiated, or are these things that are implied by the whole set of relations, a co coherence that we discussed yesterday? It's very difficult to know. There are certainly coherences. But the coherences in languages, all of which I think are LP expressible, there are some of which would not make any sense at all when refined in the body of concepts common to any users. So the externalized black portions of the shorthand way of, of, of giving areas of common meaning, which mm -hmm. as a matter of fact I think all be expressed in a logical distinction. Herons. Now expressed, I must confess, very crudely, very in a very primitive manner, um, process. And I guess I ought to put independence. And is known as L sub T, a pretty language. Now it is a, not a meta language, whatever else it may be. It isn't a, a standard logical refinement over to get truth valuable statements like l star. So it's not anything like l star in the other diagram. It is possible to derive any an L and L star from. In other words, you can specialize an L sub P statement so that it accommodates them. 
but it is literally a proto-language, meaning a crude primitive language. Uh, I guess you have to have, I don't think you need it really, but you just might put in a um, bifurcation. Would you allow that there are universals in the way, um, the way languages are, are handled internally? Um, that is, procedures which, uh, which therefore become meta-procedures, which have a kind of... Um, I don't think they're becoming a meta-procedure, they're anything very peculiar. Uh, highly specialized areas of, I mean, the natural language, there is no distinction, excepting for the user. Uh, and the intention of the user, as far as I can see, I mean, the natural languages are used as meta languages or not, and they use locally. The particular case of a meta language in this particular diagram, namely the thing I called Elstad here, is one where I adopt the role by agreement mm -hmm. uh, to give truth valuable more or less propositional or descriptive statements uh, in a highly developed part of one particular natural language uh, which has had all of its natural linguistic properties removed uh, well, nearly all of them and uh, all important ones uh, and is called a, a logical language standard logical language and where I can make truth valuable statements um, these statements, however, are about, in this case, when the object of inquiry is a conversation, are about agreements uh, over understandings, and these have a form of analogies when they are occur uh, between those who agree, at least, <laughs> and um, about that which is agreed. In other words, uh, the similarity. Well, the, the two general schools of thought, and I guess this is where I'm, I'm having some difficulty, one school of thought, uh, which you might call a school of normative behavior, mm -hmm. uh, would suggest that rules and agreements about procedures, mm -hmm. um, how we're going to agree to agree, how we're going to mm -hmm. agree to accept as valid mm -hmm. those things we call valid, uh, we agree on validity because all of our other interactions, apart from today and yesterday, mm -hmm. are so similar and so common in many ways that what seems to us as naturally valid uh, mm -hmm are shared, and therefore yeah. we, we establish normative agreements, but there's no ontological basis, no epistemological basis. Then you've got the formalists who say that it just so happens that we agree on standards of validity together because um, there is an underlying logic that, that transcends us, transcends our experience, transcends our interactions, that is somehow you know ontologically there. Um, and I'm having difficulty trying to... No, I think it in a sense true that uh, like Aristotle's law of contradiction, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. Did we well, agree on that, or do we? Oh, we agreed on that one, certainly. Other universals, I would be, are the universal, so so this universal is the usage, yes, yeah. Realist, idealist. Uh, that's undoubtedly local. Uh, I mean, others may not be. For example, I don't know about distinction, coherence, mm -hmm. and process. I, uh, may be universals in, in the required realist sense. Um, obviously they're not the only commonly accepted ones and there are universals that exist in the subculture of logicians which could be this thing, we'll call it X. Rather than calling it IBM, we'll call it X. Which, which call they would call real. Why? Uh, uh, they would call real, but in fact it's, it's just no, it's normative, it's agreement. Right. And um, to express these, it may be necessary to invoke, uh, to, uh, but I, I insist to invoke in a proto-language, which has, in a perfectly good sense, when developed an epistemology and a many-worlded ontology and a process-worlded ontology. Now, if that development is regarded as some sort of universal, it certainly isn't agreed or accepted by most people, but is, I, I think it is probably universal in a slightly different sense um, that um, if you um, pressed uh, the question which are being asked here by any route, 
Oh, for heaven's sakes, no theoretical stance is unique. Um, you would end up with something that would be put in one one correspondence with these. I don't know. I mean, I conjecture this might be so. Uh, they might have, the cake might be carved very differently, but you'd probably end up with. Well, there's not anything greatly magical about the number. I mean, I put in bifurcation as an option because, in a sense, it's implied by distinction, if distinction is a process. But uh, it isn't if not. Now, I don't know. Uh, I, I could delete that one, or I could delete that. Uh, in fact, I could change the whole lot around and have 15, or, or I could have different ones altogether. I have a hunch that that sort of collection of, of things are necessary to talk about, for example, individuality, persistence, uh, and so on. Life. Uh, but uh, I could be proven quite wrong in that, uh, easily. Uh, and certainly, certainly different idioms would be used and different words would be employed. Uh, and they needn't actually, excepting in a very odd way, be one one corresponding to that particular kick. I think what I'm suggesting is that some such cluster as that uh, would emerge if you pursued what might be interesting is to pursue it downstream in the realm of, of applications for a yes. moment. If one's interested in building, uh, I don't want to say a Turing machine, but if one is trying to build an automated um, entailment mesh, uh, shall we say, explorer, facilitator, training, teaching mm -hmm. device, yeah. and one is going to be... Uh, you mean something that really does teach? One, one wants something that really does teach, but okay. the factors, folks, uh, have been telling us for some time uh, that I don't like to use the term, but let's say cognitive styles do differ. Um, and that assumptions about the nature, the way things are connected, the interrelations themselves differ. For example, we, earlier today we talked about uh, to what extent you yourself are favorable to discussions of ambiguity or probability uh, in terms of the way that certain kinds of yeah. measures might be constructed. Well. Yeah. Supposing uh, you were trying to, uh, to deal with uh, with two or three very different cognitive styles, one that one that assumes prob probabilistic notions as a base and fundament underlying all reality, therefore the way that person might naturally try to connect things or establish coherences, uh, and someone who's coming out of a more formalistic bent, shall we say, who believes in binary rules uh, that things either are or they are not connected or disconnected, not partially connected or sort of connected. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I... How does one establish a set of grammar, I, a set of rules that satisfies a, uh, a range of interaction, uh, of, of A's and B's interaction? Well, I, I believe that L sub P is such a thing. <coughs> now, uh, it's the best attempt we can make so far, I think, to such a thing. Whether, whether this is, is anything final or heaven's sake, no, I mean, I just don't believe in it in the finalization of, of theoretical stances or even strong philosophical positions. I, uh, I think they ought to be always capable of growth, evolution, and development. And in fact, I would agree with, 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 with Popper and, and with, and with, with uh, Mario Bonge in, in, in respect to the belief that if a theory, the thing that kills a theory, is not <laughs> any way falsified, but it, it becomes ossified. Uh, and here I go along very strongly with Imre Lakatos, for example, in saying that these bobules encompassing many of the brain-like things are um, indeed what Imre would call, would have called, or perhaps, uh, have called, uh, uh, whatever that means, uh, the um, uh, a school of a, a scientific research program, or actually liberalised this a good deal, tenerate in private. So, for example, when speaking in, in architecture, which is another field of of, my, uh, of activity, uh, which he frequently did, uh, though as a philosopher of, uh, of architectural theory, and so am I to some extent. Um, he. Um, liberalize it, for example, to styles and so on, which is a self-reproducing, perpetuating thing. Uh, and of course it becomes to some extent ossified, and uh, a student of Popper's, he 
disagreed with Popper over not over the rectitude of falsification criteria or even the rectitude of uh, the all-encompassing view excluding only creativity which is rather like the reserved role of the uh, but in saying well this didn't actually happen that uh, falsification of an hypothesis by whatever means uh, was not necessarily inductively interpreted in order that in fact there should be a cognitive dissonance effect uh, uh, leading to the perpetuation and the further investment of resources in this particular school of thought. Uh, and, and I can't help uh, saying that I agree with this as a, as a rule. Uh, that um, indeed there's nothing wrong with the falsification principle if the events you're talking about are capable of having amenable to experimental falsification and so on. Uh, but uh, that in fact it, it frequently is the case that things like that that do and construct the instruments whereby falsifications of, of bits of theories or critical experiments are formed. Uh, bits of theories are falsified or critical experiments performed to, to test them uh, are, are frequently uh, simply perverting or else denying the evidence either perverting it so that the evidence is what they agree it shouldn't be, uh, or, um, or denying it exists, <coughs> in, in which case the school of thought, which is on a par with the A's and B's of the individual uh, critters, is, um, is perpetuated, uh, uh, and further experiments performed at greater cost. And, um, there is, uh, and science, of course, is, is ample evidence of this. In architecture, there's pretty good evidence of this. And um, in architecture, fortunately, the, the, the tendency to pursue over long intervals, I, mean, I think architecture actually is quite interesting. Probably the process maps are fundamentally different, uh, the conclusion came to it. Yeah. Uh, but, in other words, very different dimensions of process are used, different topologies of process mapping are used, uh, typically by uh, the professions in question, the professional schools of belief in question. But science is especially prone to that tendency, so are certain <coughs> religions too. And uh, certain political ideologies, and um, in a certain, in a good way, uh, Muscovici's treatment of minorities, and undoubtedly um, Edgar Morin's treatment of, of many social issues, is in accord with this view. Um, the influence of minorities in Muscovici's work makes sense in, in these terms, uh, and uh, Moran's autos and things make sense in these terms, and um, so does a lot of Herb's stuff too. I think the, the point would be that if you actually have a campus which is capable of conversation, then if even, and you've structured some information in that device, you have a mesh set up in a particular way, if it's in fact capable of conversation, if it encounters someone whose preferred method of organization is radically different, then you postpone the conversation about the subject that you're trying to teach and you have another conversation about, well, how is it that you'd like to have information organized? And uh, you can only come to an agreement or an understanding of organizational methods when the teaching machine or whatever has, has acquired mm -hmm. a sufficient understanding of the method of organization to be able to reproduce it. Right, but w when we talk about methods of organization, what we're really talking about are procedures. Yes, procedures for proceeding. How many of those are hardwired in the sense of no, the... No, but, but the question is, it, it, the point is, is if you built if you build any particular machine, you may have hardwired too many things. But if you have hardwired it entirely, then it doesn't, under, it doesn't do conversations. You can really talk through it to yourself, mm -hmm. or one person can talk through it to another. But if, in fact, you can talk to the machine, that is to say, the thing that you've built is capable 
of actually doing that, then the machine can be enlarged by the process of the conversation. That is, say you have a conversation with it. That would be uh, under this aegis, uh, something like a machine that exhibited some sort of intelligent behavior. Well, according to the current jargon, self-modifying code. Well, I mean, self-modifying code does not necessarily mean the same thing. I mean, it, yes, it would mm. not so much modify its code as it might modify the think its concepts. It might add concepts. It might add topics. It might add procedures. But uh, self-modifying code sounds rather different. I think I mean, it, 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 it will be modifying something. Yes. Right. Modifying it's something. modifying something. I'm yeah. not quite sure what the distinction between modifying code and modifying data is. I mean, uh, mm. you know, I. Will it's, list the same. So. Well, in some languages it's the same, but in fact, it, it, it's it's very. There's a certain uh, point of view that says even if they aren't the same in the language, uh, they may be in some meta language the same. Mm -hmm. And so the point is that if you've actually made a machine that's going to teach, mm -hmm. in the strong sense, then it will be able to, or uh, should be able to make a stab at teaching someone who wants to argue on a different or be taught on a different basis. Just as if it, it wouldn't be capable of teaching if it were not capable of doing that sort of thing, of being acted upon and changing its structure in the same way that it did. So the, at that point, the student would be, instead of the machine programming the student and adding a new repertoire of concepts to him or enabling the student to program himself, in this case, we, the machine will be using the student to program itself. And the loop will run the other way around from that picture. Mm -hmm. Now, admittedly, that's quite hard to, uh, uh, we're not in any position in this office to go and plug it in and say, yes, this is one that does that. Uh, it's hard enough, in fact, just to uh, imagine half of the conversation. I mean, what's been illustrated before is half of a conversation. One has something that does sort of half of a conversation, but it only allows certain sorts of interactions between the A part and the B mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. uh, one can make that better by making it uh, a more flexible machine to talk through, a machine that knows about certain sorts of connections that might be utilized by the person. And then one has to see uh, precisely how one proceeds with the rest of the implementation. But if you've succeeded at all in getting it to be something that converses, there's no particular reason to suppose that it, it can't handle that sort of conversation. Just as there's no reason to suppose that if you arrive in a class and you're teaching uh, the history of the tutors or you're teaching quantum mechanics and you run into a class of a particularly stubborn and resistant nature that you can't change the way you're teaching it. What you have to do there is uh, have, to some extent, a conversation. It may be brief. <coughs> it may be noted that uh, if you're teaching quantum mechanics or room and everyone is uh, mm -hmm. uh, carrying integrated circuit boards on their shirts or is or wearing motorcycle jackets decorated with chains, that you might use that information rather rapidly to sure. uh, to change what it is you were going to say. But well, that also is a conversation. But both yesterday and today, we established that at the beginning of a conversation, one, one has a contractual relation, uh, yeah. which one has agreed to converse. And one yes. has agreed to converse in a certain way. Sure. The question is, how robust yeah. uh, how robust is that contractual situation, or how precisely must you agree? Uh, well, but, but that depends upon upon. Well, upon in order to really, in order to make to make good use of the okay, current yeah. schema of implementation. If, 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 if I've made a machine that I have to talk to on the keyboard, and the person refuses to touch the keyboard, it's going to be rather difficult to proceed. In that sense, you're correct. At that point, the machine. Uh, no, no. Let, let's. I mean, let's not be far fetched. No, no. But that's not far fetched. Well, that's once you agree to communicate it. using uh, using a standard, uh, you know, in interactive machine interface, what must one also agree to? What What are the other rules of the game by which one is explicitly uh, agreeing to play by? You would like to act in some rule. Um, uh, you uh, would like to act, for example, as a student or an author or something of this sort. You, this may be uh, several of you or just one of you. Mm -hmm. It might be a team of people, a group of people, in principle, I guess, a population of people. Supposing, as um, the semiophysists say, that one of the purposes of conversation mm -hmm. is to help the converser define his or her role. Uh, I think stands. indeed. I think indeed that is true. Uh, the role you're adopting of 
student or, or author is one which is indeed changed, mm -hmm. but it remains in a good sense student or author or possibly one or the other or some other person capable of using this facility of language essentially. Mm -hmm. and it's like agreeing to be a language user and you can go and be a hermit and you're using language of birds maybe, I think you must be, or certainly internal languages if you are alive, a sentient being, but uh, you have opted out of conversing in spoken language. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a, a common phenomenon. I mean, and it's no, no more nor less, I think, than, than agreeing to be a, a member of a certain language okay. community. Right, so and we're in the language community, you have a role of at right. least speaker or listener okay, so or something. We've, we've adopted a speech role. Mm -hmm. We have a, we have adopted uh, a a set of machine procedures. No, that we haven't. Done. Well, key, no keyboards massage. Uh, okay, okay, fair enough. We can have a keyboard, but I don't mind if you replace that, and we often do. I often have done. A great majority of even experimental work has been done with things that are certainly not keyboards, mm -hmm. and that cast installation that doesn't look in the least degree like it doesn't have a keyboard near it. Uh, <laughs> if we create the point of illuminated things and to turn a dial and mm -hmm. to plug things up on boards or whatever, you may be doing devices. about steam engines or genetics, you've agreed to handle pieces of card that admit they can be sensed by a machine or whatever, but those are sort of standard convention. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't mind, I, and even uh, we were talking, um, and Jeffrey and I were talking last night about how will you teach uh, um, uh, St. Augustine and theology, and the theology of St. Augustine. Uh, with such a facility. I said, well, it's, it's actually very much more computer implementable as a modeling facility. I was going to say, it's, it's than a brilliant application mm. of, uh, of, of, of a uh, talent mesh. Yeah, well, I mean, we've taught history this way, and uh, we've taught um, acting this way, and uh, I've used modeling facilities that are actors, both in, in mime, in, in conveying in Brazil, for example, a, an impression of finite state machines, people who, because I don't speak Portuguese, uh, and somewhat minimal French, and otherwise, you know, in Quen Legre, you can't look long uh, at all. Um, and um, even if you spoke French, as a matter of fact, it has to be Portuguese, really, it has to be the local dialect. And um, the um, accepting for teaching graduate class or something, this was large in the uh, And um, we can act uh, there to mime uh, state transitions, uh, finite state machine diagrams and things, draw them. <laughs> the um, jump from state to state in different machines and occasionally act as signals. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is a perfectly good modeling facility, damn it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and don't get bogged down.